okay so this is showing part of the cell membrane right uh, diagrammatic picture of the cell membrane it is showing here phospholipid our membrane is made up of the phospholipid this head is showing phosphate group right this head is representing phosphate group and then tail so tail is representing the lipids lipid tails so phospholipid here uh, one layer uh, this is extracellular fluid so it is uh, opposite um, outside facing outside here another layer also here head facing inside and tail is interior so this is lipid bilayer so all the membranes not only cell membrane but other organelles like mitochondrial membrane or um, other golgi body they are bounded by the this unit membrane they are called unit membrane so lipid bilayer and in between the lipid bilayer there are some proteins either making the traversing throughout this by lipid bilayer like this one this is called integrated protein they are traversing throughout the membrane so when you try to take out this protein what will happen membrane will rupture but you can see some proteins here some protein they are located on the only periphery or inside the cell right they are called peripheral protein okay peripheral we can easily take out and you can see along with the protein either directly here only carbohydrate layer these are the carbohydrate either directly attached to the membrane or along with the protein they are making glyco glyco protein or proteo glycan there okay so these are especially they are abundant on the cell surface outside right this glyco protein and they are very unique to each other they are making the blood group right antibody antigens that is unique for everyone these are acting as a like a fingerprints because it is unique helping to identify helping to in all of us to identify make us very unique because these are combination of different type of protein different type of carbohydrate together they are making like antigen right very unique type of chemical there fingerprint so this is showing in more detail phospholipid and in between this phospholipid there are cholesterol layers some additional cholesterol found there so cholesterol aids in stiffening the membrane and can flip easily right and this is also flipping so that had what happens mobility of lipids within a bilayer they are helping to transport diffusion in diffusion of the lipid soluble substances lipid soluble substances can easily pass through them because they are soluble in the phosphate so phospholipids can move laterally rotate or flex rarely do they flip to other leaflets so composition wise is a thin its uh, thickness varies from 7.5 to 10 nanometer and this is elastic as because of the, it can flip with each other these molecules of the phospholipid composition wise we saw there that most of the surface area is by the covered by the phospholipids but proteins also intervening in between them and proteins are very large molecule so when you take the weight wise 50% of the 55% of the weight is by the protein phospholipid is lighter molecules so they are making only 25% cholesterol is 13% other lipid 4% and carbohydrate is 3% so membrane what is the membrane 
function it separates inside from the outside because of we use the term semi permeable membrane it allows only what type of molecule fat soluble or water soluble fat soluble molecule can easily diffuse through it other water soluble molecules they are almost impermeable they are impermeable to the membrane when we use the permeable impermeable we are talking about the directly phospholipids right which can pass through the phospholipid and they regulate exchange between inside and outside right and the what thing can pass through membrane depends on molecular size very small molecule they can pass easily another th thing is water soluble and fat soluble fat soluble molecule can pass water soluble molecule cannot pass third thing is charge on the mo molecule or ion charge particles either positive or negative polar substances they are not passing easily so phospholipid phosphate is hydrophilic molecule right charge molecule and lipid is non polar so water loving hydrophilic this phosphate group is bound outside and inside because both side there is water right hydrophobic they are inside they are oriented always inside facing each other cholesterol it is lipid in animal membranes and related ester white is found in the plants there proteins as we discussed they are found with the carbohydrates so phospholipid with carbohydrate chains they are glycolipids or glycoproteins right and carbohydrate chain of this glycolipid and glycoprotein are called glycocalyx we use the term glycocalyx so what is the function of glycocalyx that is proteoglycan or glycoprotein glycolipids they are helping into the they are make the cell unique another thing is they are helping into the cell to cell recognition then cell cell adhesion reception of the signal molecule they are acting also acting as a receptor okay so diversity of carbohydrate chain is very very large enormous providing individual with a unique and we it can act as a fingerprint to identify the different and to separate among us with each other so what is the function of cholesterol cholesterol is a stiffin making the membrane more stiff and it can move in any dimension through the membrane so once again see this is the glyco lipid glyco protein some proteins here this is the integral protein right it is also acting as a the channel ion channel some are acting as a carrier protein some are acting as a receptor protein right so these are the functions of protein transport like carrier protein they are helping into the transport they may be function as a receptors or enzymes acting as an enzymes there like tyrosine kinase we you name tyrosine kinase so look here this is two type of protein on the membrane this is the integral protein it is traversing throughout the membrane and with this integral protein another protein is attached which we can take it easily without disturbing the cellular structure so this is called peripheral proteins so peripheral proteins are non covalently bonded with integral protein or they may be 
only attach and acting as a some additional protein or peripheral protein. Most integral proteins, they are spanning the membrane, right? Maybe one time, two time, seven time, right? Acting as a receptor or ion channel or carrier protein. Like example, this one. This is the integral protein, right? Uh, this is a very large protein, amino terminal here, ligand binding domain. What do you mean by ligand binding domain? Ligand means chemical, right? Hormone or any messenger, it can bind here. So, this is acting as a receptor. Then, this is here traversing seven times seven transmembrane segment and another terminal that is the so amino terminal carboxylic terminal cytoplasmic domain interacts with the intracellular protein here so it is like when it is bind with the chemical it may make a ion so it is called ligand gated channel ligand gated channel when like acetylcholine receptors some type of acetylcholine receptor when they, they bind with the acetylcholine they will make a the, this channel open sodium channel especially so what will happens when the chemical bind it will cause entry of the sodium Integral, another example here showing integral protein which is acting as a pillar. The protein name is integrin. It is an adhesion molecule that attaches cell to the extracellular matrix. So, this is the extracellular matrix and this is the integrin protein. So, it is making the cell, fixing the cell, helping in the support like muscles. Right? So, in some muscular diseases, if there is abnormal type of integrin or abnormal type of this cytoskeletal protein, what will happen? They cannot support and there is muscular disease. Okay. Another some proteins acting as a transport, acting in a helping in the transport of the substance. Transport we can divide into the different types. On the basis of consumption of energy, we can divide the transport across the cell membrane into the two types, active type and passive type. Passive means it is not, you do not need energy, right. As we discussed just now that uh, lipid soluble substances, they can easily pass through the membrane. Okay. So, when their concentration is different on the across the cell, what will happen? They will pass from the higher concentration to lower concentration. That is called simple diffusion. That is called simple diffusion. Look here, the molecule on the outer side here, it more, another side less. So, it can pass easily when it is allowed to pass. So, like oxygen carbon dioxide, these are non-polar molecules, fat soluble type of molecule, they can easily pass through our cell membrane, right. So, they are going through the simple diffusion. It is a passive type of transport. Another here it is called facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion is for those type of substances which is not permeable through the membrane, right. They require a transport protein, they require a transport protein, transport protein having a special binding site for that molecule and it will bind on the area where there is more number of molecule is high. And it is also going from higher concentration to lower concentration. It is like a tonsil gate. Have you seen tonsil gate, right? Uh, 
on the supermarket somewhere going. So one person can go at a time. So it is a binding site, right here. It will bind, then it will cause the like tonsil get. It is moving. So that same molecular conformation will cause the transport of molecule from one side to another. Here also you don't require energy, right? Simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion you don't require energy. It is a passive type of transport. Okay. Active transport means it is going like when you want to move the water on the upper side or at the higher area. What you need to do? You need to pump it, right? It is also called uphill transport. Uphill transport, it is always going from lower concentration to higher concentration and it is al always going through the transport proteins. It is going through the carrier proteins. Okay. So, and they directly or indirectly they require energy. Uh, some proteins here like acetylcholine receptors when they bind they will make a channel open right when channels open channel means it is a like a passage here when it is uh, potassium is allowed to pass through the channel what will happen it will go from lower to higher or higher to lower. Anything, yes, higher to lower. It is going through higher to lower. And these channels are making a gap. Thousands of molecule ions can go at a time. Right? It is going at a time. Many. Right? So this is called, this is also a type of simple diffusion. When something is going through the channel, it comes under which one? Simple diffusion. Right? So you have to differentiate between channel and carrier. Channel protein and carrier protein. So like here, a figure showing what type of protein this one? Channel protein. Channel means it is making a gap. Thousand like bridge. If there is bridge, how many person can go at a time? Many persons can, can go at a time. Right? And carrier is like a turn steel gate. Right? Turn steel gate or some a special type of gate. Means one type of one person can go at a time. It is a slow process. Like this one. It is showing channel protein. So, channel protein when it is going from higher concentration to lower concentration. Cell recognition protein. Okay. So, these uh, membranes are very unique, phospholipid bilayer, right? So, because of this membrane and they are selectively permeable, some substances can pass through it, some cannot pass through it, some uh, to pass something you need energy, right? Through the carrier protein, a bioactive transport. So, this membrane, the maintenance of solutes on both sides of the membrane is critical to the cell. Means, inside the cell, cytoplasmic concentration, cytoplasmic composition is entirely different than the extracellular composition. Right? Extracellular membrane, extracellular, uh, extracellular fluid is entirely different than the intracellular or cytoplasmic fluid. Why? Because of this different in permeability of the cell membrane. So, maintenance of solute on both sides of the membrane is critical to the cell and that is important. It helps to keep the cell from rupturing. 
कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ आयन ऑन आइदर साइड वैर इज वाइडली लाइक सोडियम क्लोराइड इट इज हायर आउटसाइड द सेल आउटसाइड द सेल इट इज हायर पोटेशियम इज मोर इन साइड द सेल साइटोप्लाजम कंटेन मोर पोटेशियम देन आउटसाइड ओके एंड बट टोटल नंबर ऑफ द आयंस लाइक पॉजिटिव निगेटिव इज इक्वल ऑन साइड ऑन इन साइड एज वेल एज आउटसाइड द सेल सो वट इज परमिबल टू द मेम्ब्रेन वट टाइप ऑफ थिंग्स आर परमिबल टू द मेम्ब्रेन ऑक्सीजन कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड नाइट्रोजन बेन्जीन दीज आर द फैट सोलिव सब्सटेंस दे आर कॉल्ड हाइड्रोफोबिक मोलिक्यूल दे कैन इजिली पास थ्रू द मेम्ब्रेन ए स्मॉल अनचार्ज पोलर मोलिक्यूल्स लाइक वाटर वाटर इज डिबेटेबल वाटर इज चार्ज मोलिक्यूल राइट सो दे आर नॉट परमिबल नॉर्मली थ्रू द मेम्ब्रेन दे आर नॉट परमिबल थ्रू द मेम्ब्रेन लार्जर अनचार्ज पोलर मोलिक्यूल्स लाइक एमिनो एसिड ग्लूकोज न्यूक्लियोटाइड्स आयंस दे आर नॉट परमिबल थ्रू मेम्ब्रेन दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर यू यू हैव टू नो राइट द आयनिक कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ द मेजर आयंस एक्स्ट्रा सेलर एंड इंट्रा सेलर हाउ मच लाइक सोडियम आउटसाइड हाउ मच 142 फोर्टी टू मिली इक्विवेलेंट पर लीटर एंड इन साइड इट इज ओनली टेन पोटेशियम फोर मिली इक्विवेलेंट आउटसाइड इन साइड इज वन हंड्रेड फोर्टी सो वाई देर इज डिफरेंस बिटवीन दिस चार्जेस वी हैव टू नो कैल्शियम मैग्नेशियम कैल्शियम इज टू पॉइंट फोर आउटसाइड इन साइड लुक लुक हेयर ऑलमोस्ट लाइक नेगेटिव Also, almost negligible amount of calcium there. Magnesium is more inside, so potassium, magnesium is more inside. Chloride, bicarbonate, phosphate, phosphate is inside. Negative charge, phosphate is more inside. Glucose, amino acid, cholesterol. So these things we should know, right? So everyone. tomorrow make a chart right and so uh this is showing transport it is a master chart to differentiate between different type of transport system in our cells so energy on the basis of energy requirement this is a passive that this is the active so they use energy of molecular motion does not require atp this is called passive transport right uh, what is molecular motion actually anyone you know brownian movement brownian movement all the especially the gases most of the molecules in the liquid and as well as gases they are moving right they are not fixed they are moving and when they collide with some molecule they will again return this is the molecular motion when you heat the thing what will happen to the motion it will increase right motion will increase so more motion when it is going and like fat soluble substances it will easily pass through the membrane it is not hindered by the cell membrane molecules so use of energy like simple diffusion molecule goes through lipid bilayer what type of substances going through simple diffusion fat soluble substances right fat soluble substances like oxygen nitrogen right uh, this lipid molecule simple diffusion another thing keep in mind when 
channels are allowing when cell contain ion channels sodium channel potassium channel and they are open what will happen large number of sodium potassium can go from higher concentration to lower concentration it depends how many molecule goes depends on the concentration difference more concentration difference they will go fast less concentration they will become slow right so these both comes under simple diffusion one is fat soluble substances passing through the cell membrane another is water soluble like sodium potassium calcium they are not permeable but when channels available for them and they are open they are going in a very fast large number so they are also called what type of diffusion simple diffusion they are called simple diffusion because their number how many number passing at a time many that depends on the that depends on the concentration difference is it clear simple diffusion one is fat soluble substances they are passing through directly fat soluble membrane fat uh, lip by phospholipid bilayer another is if cells contain channel and channels right and uh, and channels are very specific we use the term sodium channel potassium channel if the channels are open large number of the these specific ions can pass through from one side to another that is also called simple diffusion you are not confused um what molecules are coming through channels i thought oh, no yeah that is a confusion thank you that's why i am uh, channel and carrier two terms there what i gave the example channel is like a bridge how many person can go through a bridge many person na eh? that depends if many person they are they, they can go one person it is it not regulated channel is a large gap many molecule going at a time so it comes under when it is something passing through the channel it is called simple diffusion and another molecule uh, another protein there very specific that is called carrier protein carrier protein so carry when carrier protein is carrying something one can go at at a time like tonsil gate right tonsil gate how many person can pass only one person when until another it will rounding then only another person go so that is uh, a speed li li limit there right so when something is going through the carrier that is making either facilitated diffusion look here what is written facilitated diffusion secondary active primary active these all three is by the mediated transport require a membrane protein and this protein is what type of protein carrier protein remember this is carrier protein molecular change they are not making a channel so that many person can go they are making a carrier protein is like a tonsil gate right very specific and they are having binding site for one or two ions at a time so carrier is a carrier protein is facilitated very specific and very slow process it is a slow rate limiting process uh, we are coming to that point you got it so carrier may be without atp or with atp right without atp it is called facilitated diffusion it is going from one side to another right it is going from one side to another means higher side to lower side facilitated diffusion or simple diffusion both are the molecule is passing from higher concentration to lower concentration is it okay so what is difference between simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion simple diffusion it is going through the 
either phosphate bilayer or through the channel and its rate is depends on the uh, it rate depends on mainly on the concentration difference but when something is going through facilitated diffusion rate depends on the how many uh, tons still gets there if one ton still get there what will happen one person can go at a time rate become one per minute per second when 10 tons still get maximum how many person can go at a time 10 so here it rate is limited rate is limited it is not the concentration gradient it depends on the how many carrier proteins there okay that is called saturation point uh, active transport means you require ATP right now two type of uh, this one uh, look here so they, they require ATP just and they require carrier protein it is passing through the carrier protein other is like big number of molecules endocytosis if the thing is very large it cannot go through the it cannot go through the carrier protein or uh, cannot pass that type of larger molecule is going through the endocytosis exocytosis and phagocytosis this is a energy driven process actually it requires more energy directly right it requires more energy so, which one is without energy? And? Yes. So, channel protein, they allow free movement of water as well as selected ions or molecules. Right? They are making like a bridge. And they depend on the rate depends on which one? Gradient. More gradient, number of molecule going. Carrier protein, what happens? Bind with molecule or ion. Then conformational change taking place in carrier protein. And that move from one side to another. It is, remember, carrier protein is not telling you active or passive. It may be passive or active. Both there. Like facilitated division or active, primary and secondary. So they move the conformational changes move the substances through the interstices from one side to another right both the channel protein as well as carrier protein are highly selective only one type of molecule can pass like sodium channel why we say sodium channel because the gap in such a way that only sodium is allowed to pass not potassium another gap there through which only potassium can pass calcium channel, sodium channel, potassium channel, chloride channel. So they are very highly specific for a specific type of molecule. And carrier protein is also very specific. So look here, carrier protein. Here, solute binding site. So when it opens this side, solute molecule bind here right then conformational change taking place and that will move one thing to another right so it is a slow rate limiting factor so how many molecule can pass across the cell membrane at a time that is not depend only dependent on the uh, concentration difference like channel protein or passing through directly it depends on how many these carrier proteins are available like for example you have 50 carrier protein for the glucose at a time 50 carrier protein so if your glucose concentration increasing from one if only difference is one one unit how many can go one can glucose go if you are increasing the concentration gradient by two two molecules can go at a time so it become double three four five how many carrier protein i told 
they are 50 so when your concentration gradient increasing by 50 it will go on increasing up to 50 right because 50 doors there 50 person can go at a time if but if you are increasing the concentration difference by 100 and doors are how many 50 so how many person can go at a time 50 so 50 is your maximum right after that it cannot increase the rate so rate limiting and what determines the rate number of carrier protein right so this is called saturation point or transport maximum those things which is passing through the carrier protein all are having their transport maximum level after that it, no matter how much you are increasing the concentration gradient its transport will not increase right this is the point we have to take in consideration like anything going through the facilitated diffusion or uh, this active transport their rate is limited but when something is going through the channel protein what will have happened is it rate limiting no because this channel they can allow large number of molecule at a time right so this is the not rate limiting factor here it depends on how many molecule passing depends on concentration gradient So diffusion, look, read as slowly here. Diffusion is random molecular movement of the substances, molecule by molecule, either through the intermolecular spaces in the membrane or in combination with channel protein. Both are comes under simple diffusion. Both are comes under simple diffusion. And when it is going through the carrier protein, it is a rate limiting factor, right? It is a rate limiting factor. Carrier protein is facilitated diffusion. So, the, but both are passive. This carrier um, diffusion, simple diffusion as well as facilitated diffusion, both are passive process. Both are causing movement of the molecule from higher concentration to lower concentration higher concentration to lower concentration and for that what is the driving energy kinetic motion of the matter passive process simple and facilitated like this is showing the simple diffusion when you are putting the dye it is spreading because of molecular motion right when you putting the dye here it is soluble in the water what will happen molecule will spread in all direction because of this brownian movement so diffusion either simple or facilitated they do not require energy first criteria right they do not require energy they always moving from higher concentration to lower concentration diffusion continues until concentration come to equilibrium means both are say, when the both side become equal molecular movement continues however after equilibrium has been reached do you understand what is equilibrium when both side equal then also they are moving because of the kinetic motion but number of molecule going in one side is equal to the another side that is point is called equilibrium and this diffusion is faster when along the higher concentration gradient right this is for the what type of diffusion simple diffusion higher the concentration gradient faster is the diffusion another thing is over the shorter distances it is we are talking about the cell membrane right so when this thickness of the membrane increasing they will take more time to pass through it if it is of the shorter distance they can pass easily right they can pass easily like oxygen 
when we are taking the oxygen into the our lungs right alveoli very thin layer of liquid there then alveolar cell membrane then capillary membrane it is passing easily right but someone having the problem it is called pulmonary edema number of uh, the water molecule accumulation of the water what will happen thickness of the membrane will increase right or pulmonary fibrosis thickness of the membrane increasing then what will happen the time to pass for the oxygen carbon dioxide molecule will take more time and person will feel difficulty in the breathing that is a dyspnea right so shorter distance means thickness of the membrane temperature is more movement is more right molecular motion increases with the increase in temperature so increased temperature diffusion rate of diffusion is high and another is size of the molecule a smaller molecule pass through the higher through the faster than the larger molecule okay so diffusion can take place in open system or across a partition that separate two system and we are talking about the cell membrane membrane permeability to a molecule depends on molecular lipid solubility when we are talking about the cell membrane it depends on lipid solubility for example oxygen carbon dioxide both are lipid soluble but their property is different carbon dioxide is 20 time more soluble in fat than what um, oxygen so what happens it can pass through the membrane 20 time faster even molecular size is higher so molecular lipid solubility molecular size lipid composition of the membrane so all this surface area is more more will be diffusion lipid solubility molecular size they all favoring the rate of diffusion thickness of the membrane when thickness of the membrane is more what will happen to diffusion increasing or decreasing yes. ha huh? decrease right jet increase or decrease decrease right good concentration increase right concentration increasing it will cause increase in the rate of diffusion so rate of diffusion is directly proportional to the surface area concentration gradient membrane permeability and membrane thickness is inversely proportional right surface area is also important look here if albumin protein right protein is polar molecule it cannot pass through the cell membrane right this side you are putting 10 molecule 10 unit of albumin another side five molecule of albumin so what will happen water if water is allowed to pass water is allowed to pass what will happen water will go from the higher concentration to lower concentration where the water is higher 5% side water is higher in the 5% side we say dilute it is going from dilute to the concentrated side so what will happen it will cause rise in this level of the water in 10% side right 10% side this is called semi permeable membrane right semi permeable membrane so how how much water will go on the another side how long water will go there can you speculate ha 
water will go then here the level will become high then till what point it will go to make both side equal when the concentration of both solution become equal till that point it will go and when only it's solute solvent molecule passing not solute passing right solute is not allowed to pass what is this membrane called semi permeable membrane and water is going diffusing from lower uh, from the dilute or from the con higher concentration of water to lower concentration of water this is called osmosis right osmosis is actually diffusion of water right it is a diffusion of water do you know what is osmotic pressure osmotic pressure here water is going right water will go so this movement of water is called osmosis movement of water is called osmosis if you are pressing this side you are pressing with this side right it is like a closed circuit when you pressing this side what will happen water will escape to another side right so if you are pressing on this side how much pressure you require to stop this diffusion of the water that is called osmotic pressure that is called osmotic pressure so how much pressure we require how much water is diffusing what determines the diffusion of water just now we discussed it is a simple diffusion of water right so simple diffusion depends on what factors can you enumerate latif what determines diffusion of water or any simple diffusion just now we discussed these things look here what are the things here tell again what is first point surface area more is the surface area more is the diffusion concentration gradient both solution is very highly different they are different one side is very high water another side is very low water another is membrane permeability water can pass through the cell membrane or not so how they are passing for that a special water channel cell contain water channel what is the name of the channel aquaporin they are called aquaporin water channels are called aquaporin so it is not water it is passing through the cell membrane it is going through the special channel membrane if something is going through channel membrane what we say is it simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion simple because more it is not depending on the uh, what we say tonsil gate or door it is a large gap so how much pressure we need it depends on concentration difference right more concentration difference more osmotic is the pressure so osmotic pressure depends on number of dissolved molecule here number of solute not number of not their molecular size right it will go till both side become equal so but you got what is osmotic pressure osmotic pressure is how much pressure you require to stop it so how much pressure you actually require that depends on concentration gradient more concentration gradient more osmotic pressure less concentration gradient less osmotic pressure so is this correct thing like simple diffusion it is passing through it directly lipid lipid soluble substance when something is going through the channel that is also simple diffusion is it clear what is difference here what is uh, it is not rate limiting factor rate depends on the concentration gradient more concentration gradient more will be the diffusion another is surface area surface area is high higher will be the rate of diffusion third thing 
thickness of the membrane inversely proportional right thickness of the membrane if thick membrane is more thick rate of is of diffusion is less okay facilitated diffusion it is going through the carrier protein it is rate limiting rate depends on the how many carriers there and concentration difference carrier protein is also used for the energy driven source that is the active transport now can we go further about the active transport or you need break huh break okay okay so summary of facilitated diffusion a require a carrier only single molecule pass at a time right from one one carrier larger particle can diffuse through the carrier protein and what type of molecule fat soluble or water soluble water soluble molecule move from higher concentration to lower concentration through the carrier protein are they require energy no good so look here like molecule to be transported it will having binding site in the carrier protein and get close one city will bind molecular uh, configuration configurational change taking place into the carrier protein and that will move from the molecule from one side to another side right like this one now active transport active two type primary and secondary so primary active transport always molecules always molecules are transported from lower concentration to higher concentration it is called uphill transport the facilitated diffusion or simple diffusion it is going from higher concentration to lower concentration that is called downhill transport here it is called uphill transport they move substances against their concentration gradient from lower to higher concentration always uphill transport right the energy for primary active transport comes directly from the atp so there is atp is the the pump this is also called atp is pump the active transport is by the atp pages they will break down the atp it energy is released that energy is used to push the thing from lower to higher concentration uh it depends on the binding site right it may be one molecule at a time one uh, or two molecule can be transported at a time two ions can be transported at a time unipotar or bipotar some examples here like sodium potassium atpase how many molecule two molecule sodium and potassium is transported and both are transported in opposite direction so it is called biport and antiport right biport and anti port calcium atpase it is only transporting calcium so it is called unipole hydrogen atpase or proton pump it is also single molecule hydrogen potassium two molecule in opposite direction if when it is going in opposite direction it is called anti port when it is going in the same direction it is called symport right biport symport so look here this is showing sodium potassium pump sodium potassium pump is very very large number in our body 
this is the main all the cell virtually contain sodium potassium pump and look here three sodium binding site they are having binding site on the intracellular side when it is intracellularly sodium will bind then there is a conformational change here right when it binds all the three molecules occupied that will close and it will open on the outer side right three sodium released so it is transported from lower inside to higher outside and there when it is released from this side another binding site will open that is the potassium binding site potassium will exactly fit there that's why it is called potassium binding site so potassium will bind from low uh, 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 extracellularly and that will be transported in inside the cell so both are going in opposite direction so it is called anti port it requires energy here phosphate atp is broken down right into adp and inorganic phosphate and energy is used to push this molecules so by this uh, sodium potassium pump because of this always sodium is high extracellular it is pumping right potassium is more inside the cell if this pump is blocked what will happen there is always sodium is leaking right leaky channel so little bit sodium is continuously leaking potassium is going outside so when sodium is going inside osmotically active substance will be high into the cell right number of molecule is high what will happen to the osmosis osmosis takes place right cell uh, will absorb water when cell will absorb water it become larger swelling takes place swelling takes place when there is less atp cells are not working well what will happen these things happening so most of the energy you used during our in our body is for the sodium potassium pump active transport now another type is secondary active transport secondary active tire transport okay it is not using atp directly it is ultimately depends on primary active transport that is sodium sodium potassium pump is pumping sodium outside more inside the cell it is less sodium here so sodium is always having capacity to move inside it is like when you are pumping water on the outside right then what will happen when you open the pipe open the tube large amount of water will fall and this will drive energy right and some it can work it can you can utilize it to drive something against the concentration gradient right so sodium will going lower to uh, it is going from higher concentration to lower concentration and it will provide energy to carry something from lower to higher right so this is secondary active transport always two or more substances are transported and things are piled up by the primary active transport right that energy used to drive something against the concentration gradient no direct utilization of energy but depends on primary active transport right secondary active transport always two or more molecules transported through the carrier routine right one molecule moves down the concentration gradient like sodium sodium already by primary active transport so that sodium is if you are allowing it to move where it will move from higher to lower concentration and it will drive energy to move something from lower to higher that's why it is called sec active active means always it is going uphill so high to low but dragging other molecule from low to high uphill transport for example sodium dependent transporter like sodium 
when sodium is moving from outside to inside from higher to lower potassium will be gone potassium is going from lower to higher right in the same binding site same carrier it is allowing to move sodium uh, potassium also along with the sodium and potassium is low outside when it bind it will transport it to the inside and chloride so it is called sodium potassium chloride channel sodium hydrogen channel sodium calcium channel sodium glucose channel amino acid channel so most of these things especially when we are taking the meal from outside right it is coming for for the along with the sodium they are transported along with the sodium right so this is the example of sodium potassium uh, sodium driven secondary active transport so you can see here lumen of intestine or kidney they contain more sodium here sodium less inside the cell so when they bind sodium they are also allowing to buy the bind the glucose glucose is low here look glucose low sodium high so this sodium is going from higher to lower it drives energy it generates energy to push the glucose from lower side to higher side is it okay this is called sodium dependent glucose transport sglt in short sodium dependent glucose transport Which which one? Coupling. coupling. Yes, we use the term coupling for these type of things. Up coupling, uphill, downhill, right? These are the terminology. Coupling means cu clubbing two things together, right? So here it is a coupling of sodium with the other, right? So it is we can use the coupling. Uh, this is summarizing membrane transport, right? Channel. Channel means what type of transport it is used? Active or passive? Huh? Passive and channel means simple diffusion, right? Simple diffusion. Carrier protein may be active or passive. Passive is for the what type of transport? facilitated diffusion right active primary active and secondary active so this is showing membrane proteins may have this type of function all are together look this is very interesting uh, this is the our intestinal lumen or on our intestine when we are eating it is coming in this direction it is this is showing the lumen when you are taking the food it will come like this right our stomach is like this here this is the tube so when things first should come from here this is called apical membrane apical or luminal membrane when we are eating it is going in the intestine so first it is coming across the apical or luminal membrane you can see here apical and luminal membrane it must pass through it here right so sodium is less inside look here sodium potassium pump this is the primary active transport right it is passing the sodium outside potassium inside so sodium is very low here and here it is high it is high into the lumen so the sodium have capacity to go inside the cell it is providing energy to move glucose from lower to higher which side 
what is the look another thing we have to remember is the side of the cell is not equal not same on all the side like this side this is called luminal side or apical side it entirely different than this one this side this is called basolateral side basal side and lateral side here it you have sodium glucose transporter for the if once once glucose is transported inside the cell it become high high and outer side this this side interstitial fluid glucose is low so it is going from higher to lower through another type of transport protein this is called glucose transporter it is going from higher to lower through the carrier protein so what type of transport it is called primary active secondary active simple diffusion facilitated diffusion what is the term used for this one glucose transporter it is a rate limiting factor can you tell hmm very good facilitated diffusion but this one sodium and glucose going together sodium is going from higher to lower and it is creating energy to carry the push the glucose from lower to higher so what is type of transport this one sglt secondary active transport good why secondary because it depends on this primary transport if you block primary transport sodium will leaking here sodium will, will become higher and if sodium is no gradient what will happen it will not this transport is not possible this is sodium is going from higher to lower amino acid is going from lower to higher so what is trans type of transport here z this one sodium amino acid co transport can you tell what is the type of transport type of transport yes what is this type of transport active passive sodium what type of transport is active hmm active. active primary or secondary secondary good secondary and once amino acid is high here it can go easily through the another transporter carrier protein that is called uh, which type facilitated if you right good you people getting it Hmm. Question for you. Can you answer? Yes. 